Hey everybody, it's Van Berman here. Welcome back to another video. We're going to be looking at Mountain Blade Manor Lords. Oh no, sorry, just Manor Lords. <laughs> I had planned that joke way ahead of time. Too, probably too far ahead of time that the payoff would never be worth the joke. Um, but we are looking at a game called Manor Lords, which is going to be, I believe, in early access at some point this year, which is good. It's uh, one of those games that comes around every so often that you hear of ahead of time and you actually sort of really late to the, to the development cycle but something that you know you take a huge interest in now i have a fair amount of skepticism when it comes to stuff like this of course as you all should but i must say you know there are many games that would come out in early access alpha beta whatever it happens to be where they're still a really good solid and enjoyable experience now to give this one its fair shake, I'm going to say that it, this is along the same sort of lines, and it's got all the great, or all the great, or a lot of the great elements that I really enjoy in sort of medieval period games. So it's more of a um, city town builder type of thing with RTS, but more large scale RTS uh, elements in it. So think of it as a bit. I suppose it's sort of. Seems like it might be a, a bit like Age of Empires with Total War. I don't know if that's how they've um, framed it. But definitely, you know, has the sort of Total War feel, having your units with uh, in a certain formations, weather conditions will affect things. We're going to go through and actually, I've seen the images and I've seen like little snippets of the trailer. So this is like the first time I've watched trailer all the way through. Um, and I'm going to go through and have a look at it. Once again, I would <laughs> urge you to maintain um, skepticism over it, but it is available on Steam to wishlist, so if it is something that you think you might want to keep an eye on, do so, because, like I said, I think, the st I can't remember where I saw it now, but I did notice that there was some fairly consistent talk about it being uh, sort of out on Steam in spring. So that could be April, May, I suppose. But nevertheless, very excited for it. And it's definitely something that I would like to give a go. And like I say, hadn't heard about it before. And uh, I think the name is quite funny as well, just because of uh, Mountain Blade. But still. Um, so this one is the City Builder trailer. And then we're going to watch the um, Battle Features trailer as well. So it's all in the access, of course. All the stuff that I think I believe that we're seeing is going to be included in the early access with then um, more sort of intricate uh, mechanics to follow later on. So let's uh, go through and have a look. I might stop at a couple of points, just have a bit of a talk about what we've seen, but um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Depends what's in it. I should probably have a mute vision now. Because <laughs> <laughs> the music's quite good. Or should that be? I hope this music's quite good. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to some of the core mechanics of the game, including regional development, trade, and military recruitment. I think it actually looks pretty good as well. Even if this is end, even this, even this ends, if it ends up how it's, how it looks. Each region has its own resources as well as a development tree. When you upgrade the residential buildings in the region, you get development points, which you can spend to unlock new development branches. This means that different regions may specialize. Oh, I think that, I mean, we have to go back. I know it sounds a bit silly, but I think that's really cool with um, actually allocating your uh, farmland way to where you want it. It sort of like gives me a bit of a feel of city skylines, you know, where you're building out your different areas and stuff, uh, industrial area, um, I can't what the one's called, industrial business and residential. Um, that's the thing I really like, that it, is, it feels a bit more dynamic in that sense, um, you know, like give you the feel that you are sort of maintaining a small hold that expands, of course, but yeah, that's quite nice, I like that. It looks, um, it looks like it'll be fairly, it looks like it might be fairly dynamic and fluid, wouldn't obviously won't know without before we get hands on it, but it's good to see that. I'm um, actually impressed. It seems like a really good idea, rather than you know, because they all could have just been tiles effectively, which I'm glad to see that it's free form. 
different regions may specialize in different things. Some uh, may be more optimized for farming. That's some right. For Wanna money. farm. And some will process the resources to make expensive goods, like shoes or clothing. Nothing looks like out of place. All those models look really well finished. Chains, the price of the goods will change, affecting the market attractiveness. Free merchants will travel more frequently to towns that have rare and more affordable goods. I can't struggle in it down that road. Well, merchants are the only what I will say is, before he talks about the merchants, is that um, the Spiff and Brit is going to have an absolute brilliant time of that finely balanced, <laughs> perfectly balanced, sorry, uh, economy, I'm sure. Far more better than I'll be able to, but anyway. Only way to get wealth in the game. Lord's treasury, however, is split from the regional wealth. As the lord or lady, you must tax your towns and villages in order to get money for your personal endeavors. There are different taxes giving various benefits. For example, the tithe goes straight to the church, but in return, the church gives you influence. Oh, we've got to balance that. Of course, you have to balance the church. What did I think about that? <laughs> the church is going to be such a major pain, I can imagine. That's. Um, I actually like the fact that that's not missed out. I don't know why, but before I went into watching this, I didn't think about the church being a... a a part of it, I don't know why um, but it's good that they well, hopefully they're going to tell us what the influence does, but um, hmm, okay, I'm intrigued actually Every so often the king gives out valuable rewards to the most influential lords on the map, including new territories, uh, he can compliment uh, or insult other lords via the diplomacy system to affect their influence <laughs> I hope your fief fiefdom rots to hell soon. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think um might be worth changing these up a bit so they don't sound quite as um as janky, but I quite like it. I think it's a, a neat neat idea. I just hope that there's not too much um oh, I don't want to say like grind because I don't mean grind, but sort of um unnecessary uh delay or restriction on being able to expand. I guess, you know, as in if you know, as in it needs to be accomplishable for you to to um, pick up territories without you know any major blockers. Well, as I've said, a whole lot of fluff there. But point is, I don't want it to be uh, too difficult and too reliant on this influence. I guess in order to, for you to be able to do it, because I feel like it might be something that you have to put a lot of your town's resources into, whereas actually more of the quote unquote fun stuff, like the military side of things, might take a bit more of a of a backseat. I'm always very much a, or for this sort of thing. My hope is that it would be more 50-50. You know, whereas like Total War is like 2080, isn't it, or whatever, you know, in terms of it's like the fun aspect of it, I suppose. The recruitment system in Manor Lords oh yeah, it's what I want to know. Some community feedback. It is now divided. Oh, oh, let's have a look at them. Go back, have a look at them. See, that's really... I love the variation in armour. So this guy's obviously got... Oh, these few down here, actually. They've all got uh, different males, of course. They've all got the same like, similar style of helmet. Similar style... Oh, they've got some different chain as well. Different coloured shields, which is okay. I'd rather them... All have very similar looking shields, maybe some like a little bit worn than others or something. Obviously, it depends on their uh, rank or their hierarchy in the tree. These probably quite late units, I would say, but they look really cool. It is now divided into three, and then you've got your footmen, I guess. Um, although, yeah, once again, they're uh, pretty heavily armored. Um, but you've got the variations. This this guy's got plate. This guy's got a, oh, it's a brigadine, isn't it? I think. Um, and they've all seemed to go. They all seem to have not short swords, no long swords. Hmm, could be. Um, but it's nice that 
that they've uh, and they've obviously all well there's some stripy ones there I'm gonna say they've all got like a similar theme so you know who's on your side but I guess the UI will make that quite obvious I imagine but I maybe would in that for that thought process because obviously color was quite a big thing um, back in the back in those in the medi well the nebulous medieval times and it would be nice if they were all a bit more sort of on the same spectrum with the colors um, just so that you know if I think about me being this guy here do I necessarily maybe think that that guy's on on my team or not mm, I don't know team <laughs> you know what I mean though um, yeah that's like a minor 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 I'm not after like perfect historical accuracy by the way I'm nitpicking so allow uh, allow my indulgence on this one unit categories first type of recruit I don't think I've actually got the resolution up as high as it can be because it looks a little, it's difficult to get the finer detail I don't know if that's just because that's how the graphics are and um, the anti-aliasing is not all that great or yeah or if it's just the way I'm Some watching it peasant militia you can call to oh, arms the guy. peasants from your villages they grab whatever improvised weapons they have and <laughs> join the fight oh that is this cool will hit your economy and you'll need at least a couple of villages to form an army if you want better militia you must train them oh yeah really like that pitchforks and with pitchforks and with daggers hopefully some with rocks <laughs> that's great at the training camp or the archery range okay the yep. of recruits are mercenary. so a lot more sort of um art well not I'm a, what am i thinking of i'm thinking rts based yeah i suppose i am you know rts based with inter you know with like having your troops sending them over to the camp or developing them from the camp and all that sort of stuff like a real almost end-to-end -end process i think that's quite good for um, giving you a bit more of a connection with the with your troops because for me I don't know if this is the same for other people but like when I play stuff like um, like Age of Empires or especially the Lord of the Rings games Battle of Middle Earth you know you build your troops and your units and then you upgrade them and they fight a load of battles and you get really sort of protective over that one unit that is one of the things that I'm not I'm not really um, sort of I always thought it was quite heartless. Heartless enough to say, yeah, that's fine. You know, they can dodge, make a new one. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Bash the keyboard. Um, yeah, and I think that there's definitely <laughs> some risk of that happening in this one. Camp, or the archery range. The second type of recruits are mercenaries. mercenaries. Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, these guys are the are the silver. What does it say? So was it silver hawks, I think, or something? That's cool, though. The last type is Lord's Retinue. This is a limited, heavily armoured unit that you can oh, my knights. Knights of Apollo. Whoa. Hey, look. Why should Pixelated Apollo get something in here before me? Because <laughs> I deserve it, surely. No, not really. But that is cool. I mean, that's obviously a nice... <laughs> that's a bit of buttering up right there. If... Hey, look, if Pixelated Apollo says this game's really good, you know why. <laughs> I like that, though. And I think he's about to go through one of the other things that, with the equipment, by the way, that I think is potentially um, a bit of a, of, of a game changer and something that not even um, Mountain Blade does that I wished it would do in terms of it, in terms of like actually being able to customise your guys's um, equipment and hopefully like based on what you've unlocked or what you mine or what you trade that if it is if that if that, if that is the route is going to go down is really really cool he didn't really say did he but i think it insinuates that, that, that there is that ah. and the cavalry as well love it where's the horse i Thank you for joining in for this short preview. <laughs> no, of where's the horse armor? Come on. Systems. It's DLC, isn't it? If you're it? interested in discussing the game, be sure to visit Manor Lord's Discord and subreddit. Yeah, I should say they've got a Discord. You all in the next video. Which I've joined, which is not a huge... I've not really found a huge amount on there so far, but um, I've very tentatively dipped my toes in. So um, I will also put a link to the Steam... Um, page in the description 
if you want to go check that out and um, and wishlist it for yourself. So that came out on the 22nd of September last year, so not too far after my birthday, actually. Oh, I'll tell you what, if I'd have seen, I'm glad I saw it this late because that's another three months of, uh, <laughs> I've saved of having to wait. And the last one is, this is one I think I've seen half of. I didn't see any of the other one. And this is the um, battle features. So this will talk more about how the battle mechanics will work, which, I mean, I'm not going to lie, the other stuff seems good enough and would be of interest to me without this other feature. But I must admit, this is where um, this is where it excites me, I suppose. So, and actually, no, the, the, the last part of the last video did as well. But anyway, I'm rambling. Let's begin. Balance is going to be a huge thing for this. Do we need to... Oh, there we go. Yeah, so that's where I saw it from. Yeah, individual equipment and stats. For each one of you guys, I think. <clears throat> so, yeah. So there you go. You can choose head protection, body protection. So different types of headgear, different types of body... Um, I don't know where the cost comes from, though. Um, I imagine there's... Oh, this person's not got much of anything, have they? Um, <laughs> but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what sort of re extra resources that that costs you, or whether you have to have... Or whether you've got like, so much to divvy out, I guess, and that increases over time. Don't know. <laughs> yes, I think I'm fairly all familiar with that one. <laughs> good as well something that total war took a long time to put in i guess you know this coming later it's got the advantage of having in my opinion like a really solid source game you know to um, take inspiration from ah yes yeah, so one of the things i saw on this that i did like and i hope is sort of spent a bit more time with uh, especially is you, you can see as that charge comes in, not only does it uh, really disrupt the front row, you can see that like, this guy here on the back row is even moved back because of the front row having to move back. And it's not something that actually I've noticed that felt really impactful in Total War games. So that kind of detail was something that I personally really like to see. Um, I hope there's a, a bit, well, yeah, I, I don't know what sort of level they want to go, the developer wants to go into. I think that would be quite interesting to, you know, if there's like a QA and a or something to put that in. Um, because there's lots of really good, oh, I spent far too long on, on YouTube watching stuff, but really good sort of historical material, uh, uh, about materials for one, um, but also, you know, battle tactics, how shield walls would line up, um, how a footman would take on a cavalryman, for example. And it would be really good to see those sort of styles and techniques implemented. It looks like, from this very short um, clip that, I, that we've seen just here, as though that is the way that they're, they're planning to go. But anyway, let's carry on. Let's see if there's, there's more good stuff. Sure there is. I'm not too keen on, yeah, the frame rate is bit weird how they sort of bunched up there. Uh, animations looks fine. I think it would be really nice if there were if there was matched combat. The problem is, and I think that's the reason that Total War stopped doing it, is because it's very expensive and costly because it requires a lot of motion capture and I imagine like hundreds of hours of it probably um, in order to and obviously type versus type all that sort of thing so you know I get the fact that it's probably going to be similar to, you know, to Total War hits on shields um, then maybe with like a full death blow animation which is fine I mean it's is I guess like in my head what's the perfect um, way that could be done but yeah, I mean, hence why I like Shogun 2 is probably one of my most favourite 
Total War, that sort of genre of game ever. Anyway, no, it's not a criticism, just an observation. Yeah, so you can see, like, he's gone through the shield there, and it's very much, uh, uh, like, yeah, I'm attacking you to knock down your, your health kind of thing. Height advantage. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, have they shown Titan loose? That's what you want. This looks really cool. So, had a stance there which was to push. So to try and, in the shield wall, to try and push him down the hill to gain advantage, to move the the stack as well. The thing that I would say is we've seen fairly sort of smaller, like this as this being a battle, they're fairly small in scale. You know, there seems to be like effectively four or five units. I wonder if that is a, a limitation or if this is just like a taste and there's going to be, that's going to be extrapolated and actually, you know, there'll be... 10, 15 units each side. That would be really nice to see, but once again, um, not quite sure on the scope of it. God, hold that! This sort of thing I really enjoy. The technique, the idea of a volley, a quick draw. Um, you know, good positioning with your quiver there as well. I'm hoping these guys are going to fire straight away. Yep, and they do, and there's like that natural flow for the arrows, which is really cool. Um, and actually, like really decent detail as well on them, which is good to see. But actually, we'll get back, have a quick check. Have they got braces on? I mean, they're all covered, I guess, which is a good start. Um, leather belts, tunics, uh, I can't really, nothing that stands out to me as... Uh, being, yeah, no. Bit of a weird uh, shooting position there, but okay. Ah, now you see that is good. Holding their formation and going back, stepping backwards. I really like the idea as well of Battlefield having rain on it as well. Fatigue's obviously something that we're well accustomed to at this point. And the blood splatter and everything was pretty cool. So what I will say is this is know, a point that I've neglected to mention up until now. Um, this is done mostly, I think, well, pretty much mostly. I imagine that he's you know, sort of uh, reached out to people as sort of contractors, I suppose. But it is developed by one person, which is absolutely incredible. I imagine he's, um, he's been going on for a while, I believe. He's, I imagine he's lent on the community quite a lot because, you know, there's a lot of really good details in there that I don't think um, one person would necessarily be able to maintain. I mean, not just that, you know, looking at the buildings and the setting, the scenery, the music, you know, <laughs> let's be realistic. It's not, not literally just one person that does all that, but... Mm. I am massively impressed, and I think that, you know, I wouldn't have a near, like we've gone on a nearly half an hour video now for what is effectively four minutes of, of video on an early access game. You know, to say that I am excited about this is a, is a bit of an understatement. Obviously, of course, you have to temper it because it is going to be early access. You're not guaranteed to get a finished, fully working game, you know. It basically, the state it comes out in is how you have to enjoy it, or else you will get you'll get nothing out of it. But yeah, I I don't know what to say. I would really. So the next one is the early access launch video, which you know says to me we're probably like three or four months off that, and it seems like it's probably about quote unquote ready for early access. Um, like I say, hopefully, hopefully there's quite a bit of work done on the balance before then because. You know, that can really sort of take away from an experience, even if it is alpha or or beta, early access, whatever you want to call it. So, mm, I am, um, yeah, really excited to get my hands 
hope well i will eventually get my hands on it um you know to get my hands on it and it would be you know i would obvious obviously be more than happy to um you know get involved with the um some of the finer finer points i just don't really know where to add any sort of input i guess i know there's the discord but there's no sort of like um doesn't really seem to be like questions that need answering i guess because i've not seen anything that is an issue or anything i think oh yeah that definitely needs changing um you know just those little few bits here and there but they're nothing because they don't have to go in um you know for the for the way the game's set up but yeah you know i um look all i'll say is if you if you know if if you want to send me a copy early or you know something like that. I'm more than happy to to play for it and and uh, whatever else. <laughs> and then you can all not believe my opinion on it. No, I'm kidding. Um, obviously, yeah, I'm always interested in this sort of stuff. But um, I don't have anything else to say. I can't praise it enough. To be fair, it piques my interest quite a lot, and even more so now than before I started the video. So probably seems like I'm gushing whereas at the video at the start of the video probably more a bit more level-headed but no I recommend checking out at least following its development if you're into any sort of you know medieval city build even just city building like I know I guess um but you also enjoy the battle elements of Total War obviously I don't know the limitations so I'm not going to say that for certain uh, I thought that there were some really good mods for Rome 2 and Attila they did a really good job that were of this same sort of style. Is it Attila? Age of Charlemagne. Attila. Yeah. That I played previously. Um, it does a really good job of that sort of thing. So, you know, there are alternatives out there that people have also spent a lot of really good time and effort on. But, yeah, I don't think anyone has really ever quite pulled it off like this. And I think that sort of more close mashup between like your age of empires and your total war is really interesting and i think it will work i mean it looks like it will work how the transition happens between your city building and your battles i've not seen maybe i've missed it uh, maybe it's that you sort of send your men to war type of thing i don't know it's an interesting concept but yeah we will see we will see. I don't have anything more to say. Uh, if you do have any comments or questions or anything like that, leave them down below. And if I can answer, I will. And also let me know if it's something that you are uh, potentially excited for. Uh, it looks like the uh, specs or minimum system requirements are up on the Steam page. They don't seem too bad, to be honest with you. Um, they said that the, it may change, but, you know, the, an FX 6350, fairly old chip, um, or a 3470. I imagine anything around that sort of era, though, will probably be fine. And then it says minimum of 670 or a R9285. So, hmm, I don't know. It's, I get the vibe from it that a 660 would probably be able to play it. Um, maybe struggle with more of the uh, sort of later game, you know, where you've got a lot more going on. For example, a lot more troops and what have you. But, yeah, it's an interesting one. Difficult to tell, obviously. Before having, before having to play with it. But I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I will see you all very soon. Bye for now.